Happy Sabbath and welcome to the Campbell Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is our online Sabbath school and we are so excited that you are here with us. We thank all of you who join us week after week. Many of you have been following us for the last 20 months, I think. Um, and you've also been a part of the series that we're doing, Back to the Basics. And I have to say that um, this series, out of all the series that we've done, which um, they've all been a blessing and we've gotten positive uh, feedback from all of them and how uh, different series or different programs have changed people's lives. I have to say that um, this program that we've been doing for the last, now today is six weeks. Uh, this is the sixth program. It's so encouraging to hear back from so many of you from all around the world who have been very blessed by this information uh, back to the basics. Because you're, the things that we hear is, I'm understanding prophecy clearly for myself for the first time. I understand the timeline of events. And it's just so encouraging to, to see that. So we just praise God that you've been blessed. It's blessed me personally, and it's been a blessing to just do this. And so we're going to continue that today. Um, we had another testimony from this series, um, a 15-year-old um, young man. Um, and if you guys remember, we started this back to the basics, and we wanted to do it as simple as possible that a 10-year-old could understand. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a 15 year old uh, who lives in Australia and because their Sabbath has already passed because there's so many hours ahead of us here in America, he preached um, on his Sabbath uh, yesterday, well, our yesterday. Um, and so he preached on, because this series inspired him. And so he preached um, on this, uh, on what we've been covering from Daniel and he covered it so well. And if you're Follow my husband on his Facebook page. He posted the sermon. And so we just praise God um, that our prayers have been answered because we wanted to make it as simple as possible, um, even for our young people to understand. And I'm just, just excited that that is what's happening. And so praise God. And we're going to continue that uh, today. Amen. I want my husband before you say, well, you're going to say something, but I want you to read my t-shirt. Uh, never underestimate a mom fueled by prayer. Yes. So those of you who've been following for the last 20 months, you know I wear t-shirts that, that with a message. Um, and so, you know, this one is just so powerful because the power of prayer um, is so amazing. And then when, and it says a mom, but parents, anyone, I mean, I had grandmothers uh, and grandfathers praying for me, but you know, it's just so powerful um, when you pray for your children, like never give up on your children, always pray for them. Mm -hmm. um, trust that God has a working uh, salvational <clears throat> plan individually just for each one of them um, and just never stop uh, praying for them because a praying mother is a very powerful uh, tool um, used by God. And Satan hates that. He hates it when we are so faithful and committed to praying for our kids. So continue Amen. to pray for your kids. Amen. So uh, in case you're wondering about our background, yeah, we're on that. the road. Yeah, we are. We're on the road. So um, we, uh, instead of, uh, we're not going to be uh, preaching uh, for divine service well, today. I'm we, not going to be we preaching. We don't preach. Yeah, He's I'm not going to be preaching. But uh, we are on the road. And uh, instead of canceling the Sabbath school, we decided that we would uh, just do it on the road. So uh, that explains that but we have mm -hmm. a lot that we're gonna uh, attempt to cover today mm -hmm. and uh we're going to try to make it as simple as we possibly can so um i i'm so thankful for all the emails mm -hmm. and all the messages we've been getting um from so many of you saying that you are finally understanding daniel 11 these last five verses you're finally understanding <clears throat> the chronology and order of end time events. Mm -hmm. And I think what's been a blessing, the, the, you know, what's been most a blessing to me is how you're saying, this is so simple for me to understand. Like right. I'm really understanding mm -hmm. it and it's not, <clears throat> you know, taking me all this complicated, right you know, ways of trying to understand it or even explain it to others. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I want to say, because you mentioned that we won't be, he won't be preaching. 
But those who uh, live locally in the Bay Area, uh, we church is open and uh, we have an, an amazing speaker um, who is a mental health professional, a licensed therapist who's also a pastor. Mm-hmm. And he will be preaching. Uh, Claudio Silva will be preaching today at Campbell uh, Church. And so if you live locally in the Bay Area, please, um, if you want to, to worship in person, um, attend um, the Campbell Church because it will not actually uh, be live streamed on this platform. So if you want to hear this amazing uh, message that God has prepared uh, through uh, him, then definitely attend in person. All right. So let's pray yeah. and jump in. You, you want to lead out? Okay. okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for what you have done for all of us already through this series. Um, and I just personally thank you. I feel like those who email that I'm finally understanding very clearly for my myself. And so I really believe that we're making it um, as simple as possible. And you have your Holy Spirit has been poured out and it's continued being poured out and blessing us and giving us understanding. Lord, we ask that you will uh, be with us today as we continue to study, help nobody to fall behind um, and help us all to see clearly what is in your word. And we ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Um, so we are uh, picking up our study on Daniel 11 and verse 45. Uh, and we're dealing with the planting of his tabernacles um, between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. And we're going to be looking at this in detail. Um, but we're going to do a little recap first. And there's actually something I want to address right up top. Uh, so we're going to go to our slides. And we want to talk about the appearing of Satan uh, in the time of trouble chapter, chapter 39 of the Great Controversy. <clears throat> and uh, what some people have asked is, uh, Pastor, you know, we're, we're getting what you're saying. We understand it. But how would you respond to um, the idea that Satan appears in, in the Great Controversy book? Right, Satan appears in chapter 39 of the Great Controversy, which is entitled The Time of Trouble. Mm. Isn't the time of trouble after the close of probation? And wouldn't that put Satan appearing after the close of probation? So there are two things, two points I wanna I wanna um stress here first. I'm gonna try to do this quickly, but it may take a little bit of time. Point number one. <laughs> is that the great controversy, especially those final chapters, is written on the principle of repeat and enlarge, okay? <clears throat> Even though the titles are structured in such a way that, you know, they're taking us step by step through through final events, the information within the titles is much like Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 and Daniel 8 and 9 and 11. <clears throat> it's based upon the principle of repeat and enlarge. It's not strictly chronological. So let me just give you an example. And I'm going to, you know, just make this screen large for a moment because I know these words are pretty small, but <clears throat> chapter 36 of the Great Controversy, okay, that's three chapters earlier, entitled The Impending Conflict. You also find the appearing of Satan in that chapter. So, you know, when people say, oh, the appearing of Satan is in chapter 39, as if it is nowhere else discussed in the great controversy is erroneous. So I just want to to, to compare um, chapter 36 with chapter 39. I'm going to show you the appearing of Satan in both chapters. Uh, In chapter 36, page 588 to 591, and we're just going to do this parallel. Here's what she says regarding Satan in chapter 36. She says that this is thought to be the ushering in of the long expected millennium, talking about the appearing of Satan. In chapter 39, she points to it as the consummation of the hopes of the of the church, right? When Satan appears, they think, oh, this is the millennium. Oh, this is the consummation of our hopes. Christ is here. Um, <clears throat> this is the 88, eight, the uh, 88 version, Mrs. Williams. Okay. So in 36, she says, Satan appears as a benefactor of the race. In 39, Satan himself will personate Christ. 
in 36, she says he will heal the diseases of the people. And these are, I'm, they're in quotations because I'm taking her words straight from the chapters, right? She says, healing the diseases of the people. In 39, she says, he heals the diseases of the people. In 36, she says, but at the same time, he works as a destroyer. In 39, she says, he claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday. In 36, she says, will persuade men that those serving God are causing these evils. In 39, she says, declares that those who persist in keeping holy the seventh day are blaspheming his name. So in essence, beloved, what I'm trying to say is this. <clears throat> 39 is not the only place where she talks about the appearing of Christ. Mm. But 39 is a place that she goes into the most detail. Right. Okay? okay. So don't look at this as it is strictly chronological. No, it's based upon the principle of repeat and enlarge. Now, mm. here's our second point. Now we're going to go to, we're going to stay in chapter 39. And, and people's, a lot of people who share this thought say, well, the time of trouble is the close of probation. But what we need to understand is that the time of trouble comes in, it's a twofold time of trouble. There are two parts to the time of trouble. So I'm going to read these statements. Um, Anatante, just, you I'm, know. I'm, I'm yeah. listening. If and I following. start to fly high. Yeah, then, I'm going to bring you okay. down. Okay. <laughs> so Ellen White says in Christian Experience and Teachings, page 93, and at the time of trouble or at the commencement of the time of trouble, we were filled with the Holy Ghost as we went forth and proclaimed the Sabbath more fully. This enraged the churches and nominal Adventists as they could not refute the Sabbath truth. And at this time, God's chosen all saw clearly that we had the truth. And they came out and endured the persecution with us. I saw sword, famine, pestilence, and great confusion in the land. The wicked thought we had brought the judgments upon them. And they rose up and took counsel to rid the earth of us thinking that then the evil would be stayed. Okay, mm. so here we clearly see that this time of trouble that she's talking about, the commencement of this time of trouble, we're still preaching. And if we're still preaching, what does that mean? Probation has not closed mm -hmm. because people are still coming into right. the truth. They have still have a chance. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go here. But this is another place where we get tripped up because some people think probation closes for Adventists first, and then they go out and preach to like the great multitude. Michael only stands up once. once right? Remember that Michael only stands up once. Mm -hmm. um, judgment beginning in the house of God. We address that in an earlier subject. That does not mean mm -hmm. that Adventists are being judged first and then the world no judgment mm -hmm. um, beginning in the house of God means that the judgment, there's the first judgment for those who are saved. Mm -hmm. That's the house of God. Read the rest of the text. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it says, what will happen to those that believe not? Mm. If judgment begin in the house of God, what about those, in essence, that believe not? So that second judgment is the millennial judgment that takes place during mm -hmm. 1,000 years. To believe that Adventist, the probation closes with us first, would is still... Um kind of in the in the false teaching of the rapture family yeah it's not exactly yeah. that but it's still we, we made like, that comparison with the rapture right. and yeah satan has his version for adventists mm -hmm. and, and you know guys the and more a rapture version yeah of that for adventists and, which and is that yeah the more that that we're studying this mm -hmm. is the more i'm coming to understand when ellen white says many will stand in our pulpits with the hellish torch of false prophecy mm. Like, I was just like, what, are they going to be teaching the rapture? That can't happen in no, our church. Are right. they going to be teaching, you know, that, uh, that you know, the change of the Sabbath is okay? Yeah. What are they going to be preaching from our pulpits? And right. now I'm beginning to understand that there's a lot of confusion being preached from the pulpits that is lulling mm -hmm. the people of God to sleep and I would while, say, and I would while say not, claiming to wake them up. Right. Well, yes. Yes. And I would say not intentionally not right? intentionally mm -hmm. all right so let's keep moving <clears throat> so in the time of trouble chapter then we should expect that there are two aspects to this time of trouble it's not just the close of probation mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there is a 
there is a time of trouble before the close of probation, and there's a time of trouble after the close of probation. Mm -hmm. So listen to what Early Writings, page 85, says here. The commencement of that time of trouble here mentioned does not refer to the time when the plagues shall begin to be poured out, but to a short period before they are poured out, while Christ is in the sanctuary. Now, mm -hmm. notice that term short period. Remember last week in our study when we talked about Revelation 12, where Satan, the Bible says, warned to you for, you know, Satan has been cast down um, and he knows he has but a short, short time. time. Mm -hmm. If we're connecting Satan literally dwelling on earth now with that short period, mm -hmm. then this, you see how this fits in. Mm -hmm. This short period before the plagues are poured out is Daniel 11, 40 to 45. Mm -hmm. It is that period where Satan has manifested himself as Christ, mm -hmm. but probation is still open. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's keep moving. At that time, while the work of salvation is closing, trouble will be coming on the earth and the nations will be angry, yet held in check so as not to prevent the work of the third angel. Mm. At that time, the latter rain or refreshing of the presence of the Lord will come to give power to the, to the loud voice of the third angel and prepare the saints to stand in the period when the seven last plagues shall be poured out. Mm. So <clears throat> there is a, let me, let me pull it up here. I know that looks complicated, but it's not. It looks interesting. It looks interesting. <laughs> the pre-seven cop. Top what? what what pastor what is that? this is pre seven plagues mm. close of probation, probation time of trouble got it there is a post seven plagues close of probation time of trouble so the time of trouble is in two sections pre plague mm. post plague pre close of probation post close of probation when we get to this controversy, I mean, when we get to the great controversy, chapter 39, and see the time of trouble chapter, don't think all she's talking about here is after the close of probation, because there's two close of probations. I'm sorry. There's two times of trouble. I was just going to say, you're contradicting yourself. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. There's two times of trouble, mm -hmm. the pre-close of probation time of trouble and the post-close of probation time of trouble. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go back and see the, the way that we identify this is very simple. When are the plagues being poured out? When the plagues are being poured out, we know it is close of probation. Mm -hmm. If they're not being poured out, this is before the close of probation. Right. So let's read Great Controversy, page 624, Time of tr Trouble chapter. As a crowning act in the great drama, Satan himself will personate Christ. The church has long professed to look to the Savior's advent as the consummation of her hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. The glory that surrounds him is surpassed, unsurpassed by anything that mortal eyes have yet beheld. The shout of triumph rings out in the air. Christ has come. Christ has come. He heals the diseases of the people. And then in his assumed character claims <clears throat> to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday and commands all to hallow the day which he has blessed. He declares that those who persist in keeping the seventh day are blaspheming his name by refusing to listen to his angels sent to them with light and truth. The plagues are not being poured out right now. Mm -hmm. it, at this point, the plagues are not being poured out, right? People are rejoicing. This is Christ. And, and he's saying, listen, um, this is my day. And he commands all to hallow it, meaning there are many people who have, who aren't hallowing it. Right. And now they listen to him. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Remember, this yeah. is the mark of the beast issue. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is happening before the plagues. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. <clears throat> As the Sabbath has become the special point of, con of controversy throughout Christendom, same chapter, and religious and secular authorities have combined to enforce the observance of, of the Sunday, the persistent refusal of a small minority to yield to the popular demand will make them objects of universal ex execration. Plagues not being poured out yet. When they are the objects of universal execration, plagues are not being poured out. Mm -hmm. It will be urged that the few who stand in opposition to an institution of the church and the law of the state, 
so now everything is past, ought not be tolerated, that it is better for them to suffer than for the whole, for whole nations to be thrown into confusion and lawlessness. Mm -hmm. This argument will appear conclusive and a decree will finally be issued. Listen to this. A decree will finally be issued against those who hallow the Sabbath of the fourth commandment, denouncing them as deserving of the severest punishment and giving the people liberty after a certain time to put them to death. Mm -hmm. This is the death decree. This is Satan's death decree. Plagues have not been poured out yet. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great controversy, <laughs> page 590. She says, while appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their diseases, all their maladies, he mm -hmm. will bring disease and disaster until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who are serving God are causing these evils. Now, let me make a correction here because this uh, quote is actually coming from the impending conflict chapter. That's chapter 36, mm -hmm. not chapter 39. Okay. But it parallels exactly with what chapter 39 is saying, which is Satan is going to be causing destruction while appearing to be the healer of disease. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reason why this is important is because there is a Satan induced, uh, there are Satan induced pestilences mm. that occur pre seven plagues. Right. Okay. So yes, there's going to be stuff happening with the weather. Yes. There's going to mm -hmm. be stuff happening with the climate, but it's Satan induced. It's mm -hmm. not God induced. Mm -hmm. The God induced plagues or, or weather stuff happens when the plagues begin to fall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. When the plagues begin to fall. Mm -hmm. Um, sequel, yes, mm -hmm. uh, Muslims, atheists, and evangelicals are going to unanimously follow the beast. It's not going to be that, which means they're going to be giving up their religion. They're going to be giving up their anti-religion. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to come back to that. Okay. Um, um, special testimonies, volume four, page 441, 444. Listen to what she says here. Talking about the appearance of Satan. She says, Satan will continue to act a double part. Appearing to be the dispenser of great blessings and divine truths, he will, by his lying wonders, hold the world under his control. And at the same time, he will indulge his malignity by causing distress and destruction and will accuse God's people as the cause of the fearful convulsions of nature and strife and bloodshed among men, which are desolating the earth. Thus, he will excite to greater intensity the spirit of hatred and persecution against them. This mm -hmm. is Satan doing this, right? Mm -hmm. um, going back to the great controversy chapter, as the decree issued by the various rulers of Christendom against commandment keepers shall withdraw the protection of the government and abandon them to those who desire their destruction, the people of God will flee from the cities and villages and associate in companies dwelling in the most desolate and solitary places. Many will find refuge in the strongholds of the mountains. Listen to this. The beloved of God pass weary days Bound in chains, shut up in prison bars. Is that a time of trouble? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sentenced to be slain. Is that a time of trouble? Mm -hmm. Some apparently left to die of starvation in dark and loathsome dungeons. Dungeons. Is that a time of trouble? Yes. No human ear is open to hear their moans. No human hand is ready to help to, to lend them help. Mm. All right. <clears throat> then she says this. Same chapter, right after. She says, God's judgments will be visited upon those who are seeking to oppress and destroy his people. Mm. This is when God steps in. Right. This is when Michael stands up. Yes. This is when probation closes. closes. When all the world is now saying, yep, time to put God's people to death. Right. And they're waiting for this to happen. Mm -hmm. This is when God's time of trouble begins, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
when Christ ceases his intermission, mm -hmm. when Christ ceases his intercession in the sanctuary, the unmingled wrath threatened against those who worship the beast and his image and receive his mark will be poured out. Mm -hmm. This is Daniel 12, mm -hmm. 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. So we're about to wrap this up in terms of, you know, mm -hmm. this great controversy, mm -hmm. chapter 39, mm -hmm. you know, question. Right. There are two times of trouble. Time of trouble A, time of trouble B. Time of trouble A is Daniel 11, 40 to 45. And mm -hmm. here's what that time of trouble includes. The appearing of Satan as Christ the personification of good angels and the dead. Mm -hmm. Satan playing the double part, bringing natural disasters as if they are punishments from God against lawbreakers. Mm -hmm. The loud cry is going forth, attended with power, bringing in people from other foes. Mm -hmm. Sunday law is unfolding in stages. Yes. Satan's death decree is issued. Mm -hmm. There is persecution, imprisonment, and even death of the saints. Mm -hmm. We are fleeing from the cities. During that time. The time of trouble B is Daniel 12, 1 and 2. In that time, Michael stands up. Probation is closed. Mm -hmm. All are sealed or marked. Mm -hmm. There's God's death decree. Mm -hmm. Remember, if any man worship the beast in his image, this is the fulfillment, right, of the third angel's message. Uh, plagues begin to fall. Mm -hmm. There's no more death among God's people because it serves no purpose. Right. Jesus returns. The righteous dead are raised. I I don't know. Like when you were reading the uh, about these Time of Trouble 8. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like it just sounds so, I mean, it you know, it seems when we have read those things in the past, so scary and but just under, when you put it like in the A and B, like you, um, it, you have so much encouragement, right? Like God's people know that Michael's going to stand up at some point where he's going to deliver them. Yeah. And that's what you can carry through. Um, you can, it, when, when you're believing in that, you can have hope and you can have faith. And, Absolutely. And that that's exciting. I mean, as you're reading it and it went into to, to be, it almost was like a movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, and again, you know, it was like, it was like yeah. that. It was like, he comes and saves his people and the, you know, destroys the villain. Yeah. And he, here's the thing is that <clears throat> the reason why God's people are going to be able to stand in this time mm -hmm. is because, because of Daniel 12, because of Daniel, 12, yeah. because of Daniel, because God was like, look, let Michael me tell you stand. what's going to happen so that you know. Right. So as we're seeing it happen on one hand, it's like, I cannot believe this is happening. On the other hand, it's like God is real. And he's like about to, this is actually yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. And I understand it. Mm -hmm. That is and we gonna don't be have to encouraging. be afraid. We're not gonna we be, don't have afraid to be afraid because we know we understand. We've been telling people mm -hmm. this is gonna happen, and now it's coming to pass, and we're like, okay, we get it now. And that's why it's so important to tell people correctly. Correctly. So when it happens, they recognize it as, wow, Absolutely. this is God. Absolutely. All right. So now we're going to do a little recap of what we covered last week, which was this, again, threefold union, right? The whirlwind. When Satan comes or the king of the north comes like a whirlwind with chariots and horsemen and ships. Mm -hmm. So what did we see about the whirlwind? Bible says in Isaiah 66, 15, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. We saw that the coming of the whirlwind, the coming like the whirlwind is Satan impersonating the second coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. We saw the chariots and horsemen. Psalm 68, 17, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Mm -hmm. Listen. Mm -hmm. This is so important. This is so important. Natural healer mom. Yeah. Knowledge is, will not keep I was us. Gonna, I wanted to comment on that yeah, too. Yeah. Knowledge is not going to keep us, right? We can right. know and still be lost. What I'm saying is though, that just having the knowledge in itself is comforting to God's people. It helps you have faith. Yeah, absolutely. And to know that God wants you. It helps you have faith in, in, in God. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and if you have faith in God and these things, you, have, you will have faith in God too to work in your life, change yeah. your character to, you know, it, 
it builds your faith yeah to have a walk with him yeah so so remember this right like there's sunday talk now there's been sunday talk mm -hmm. for a long time in america right mm -hmm. but it's you know christian people trying to say we need to keep sunday and muslims aren't listening to that mm -hmm. atheists aren't listening to that right it is not until satan appears that the sunday question will catch the traction worldwide i'm talking about in china y'all mm. just stop for a second <clears throat> how is china just put a one in the chat if you catch what i'm saying mm. if the pope got up today at cop 26 and said we need to keep sunday in mm -hmm. in honor of jesus is china gonna listen to them mm. That's a pretty big part of the population. Is North Korea going to listen? Is North Korea going to listen? <clears throat> are these nations that are highly secular or highly atheistic or communistic going to be like, you know, mm -hmm. I knew there was something good about the Pope. Mm -hmm. He is right. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. This is not going to be something that's worldwide until Satan himself is manifested. Mm -hmm. All right. So we saw the chariots where it's basically demonic angels counterfeiting holy angels in connection with the coming of Christ, mm -hmm. right? The coming of this false Christ. So you got the coming of this false Christ. You got angels, demons pretending to be angels. And then we saw the ships connected with the deep. The ships connected with the deep. And we saw that the deep was a reference to the dead, right? Jonah, I went down into the deep. I, he was there three days and three nights. And so we looked at that whole connection and basically saw, yeah, this is spiritualism that Ellen White was talking about. This mm -hmm. is Satan appearing as Christ, angels pretending, I mean, demons pretending to be angels and other demons pretending to come up from the dead, mm -hmm. pretending to impersonate the dead. Now we need to talk about the tabernacles. Okay. So we just spent a, a, quite a lot of time recapping, mm -hmm. but now we're on 45. What is it? Daniel 11:45, and let me just make this screen big again. Daniel 11:45, it says, "He shall plant the tabernacle of his palaces between the seas in the glorious holy mountain, yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him." All right, we need to break this down. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to start. We need to recap something first, because we, we talked about I know we recapped already, but we're going to recap again. We talked about uh, um, uh, the, the text we just read talks about Satan planting his tabernacles, his tabernacles. Now, <clears throat> last week we closed with this. In Matthew 17, verse 1, after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them who Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. <clears throat> if thou wilt, let us make here three what? <clears throat> Tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah. This is powerful because what we saw a few things. Number one, remember that Elijah went up to heaven by a whirlwind. Right. There appeared chariots of fire and horses of fire, and it took Elijah up into heaven by a whirlwind. So Elijah happens to be connected with the whirlwind. Moses, remember Moses ascended from death, right? Mm -hmm. He was resurrected from the deep. Deuteronomy 30, 13, neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear and do it. Paul takes the same verse and says this instead, or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring Christ up again from the dead. Mm -hmm. So we see the deep is synonymous with, with the, the dead. dead. Mm -hmm. Elijah, whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Moses, the deep. Listen to this. <clears throat> Ellen White says this in Desire of Ages, page 421. 
Moses upon the Mount of Transfiguration was a witness to Christ's victory over sin and death. He represented those who will come forth from the grave at the resurrection of the just. Elijah, who had been translated to heaven without seeing death, represents those who will be living upon earth at Christ's second coming. Watch. Watch. Jesus was clothed with light of, with light of heaven as he will appear when he shall come the second time without sin unto salvation. So look at what's happening in Daniel 1140, right? You got the counterfeit, counterfeit appearing of Christ. Mm -hmm. You got um, counterfeiting of angels with the chariots. Mm -hmm. You have the counterfeiting of the dead right. with the deep, with the ships. Mm -hmm. And here's what she says. The Savior's promise to his disciples is now fulfilled. Upon the mount, upon the mount, mm -hmm. upon the mount. Remember what we're talking about in Daniel 11.45. Mm -hmm. Satan's going to plant his tabernacles between the seas mm -hmm. and the glorious holy mountain. Mm -hmm. Upon the mount, the future kingdom of glory was represented in miniature. Christ mm -hmm. the king, Moses a representative of the risen saints, mm -hmm. and Elijah of the translated mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. They believe that Elijah has come to announce the Messiah's reign and that the, kings of Christ, the kingdom of Christ is about to be set up on the earth. The disciples are confident that Moses and Elijah have been sent to protect their master and to establish his authority as king. Mm -hmm. What is Satan? Who He's said, gonna... let's build the tabernacles? It was Peter. Peter yeah. It was the people. Mm -hmm. Because of what they saw, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this miniature uh, uh, um, thought, this miniature appearing of this is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. It's about to be set up on earth. Here's Jesus. Here's, you know, mm -hmm. those that have come back from the other side. Mm -hmm. Let's set up some tabernacles. Mm. Mm -hmm. This sets the foundation mm -hmm. for us to understand that it is a counterfeit appearing of Satan with the de with demons impersonating angels right. and the dead that leads the people to say, mm -hmm. let's set up a tabernacle. Right. This is Jesus here. The kingdom of God is on earth. And who's going to do this as well? Mm -hmm. China, mm -hmm. Russia, North Korea, North Korea, mm -hmm. every nation on the earth. earth. Yeah. Why? Because seeing is believing. Yeah. And not understanding the state of the dead. And not understanding the state of the dead, mm -hmm. not understanding how Christ comes again, not understanding that Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. All of this is setting the world up mm -hmm. for this overmastering delusion. Mm -hmm. So, so he shall plant the tabernacle of his palaces between the seas and the glorious holy mountain, and yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Let's break it down. What does it mean he shall plant? He shall plant. Okay, Jeremiah 18, 9. And at what time I speak, I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it if it do evil in my i'm not going to read the rest i want you to see how the word plant mm -hmm. represents building a kingdom okay right so to plant it would be to plant a kingdom to okay. set up a kingdom so no. satan is going to be planting or setting up a kingdom okay building a kingdom it is interesting because in Daniel 9, 25, we have the same term that is used to represent the restoring of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. right? Jerusalem was to be restored by a particular decree. That kingdom was to be rebuilt by a particular decree. Mm -hmm. And that decree was Artaxerxes' decree in 457 BC. Why do we choose that decree? Because it's in that decree that Artaxerxes says, set up judges and magistrates. When you have judges and magistrates, it means you're not operating on law. Okay. You have set up a law to go along with your kingdom. So think of it this way. The first decree to restore Jerusalem mm -hmm. was only in actually building the city, okay. building the temple. Right. Right. But it had nothing to do with setting up laws for that city. Okay. Correct. It is not until Artaxerxes' decree 
that now the city has laws. Okay. That's when it's planted. Okay. That's when it's built. And in fact, Isaiah 126. And that's what Satan will have to do. That's what Satan's okay. going to do. Isaiah 126, I will restore thy judges at the first, speaking about Jerusalem being rebuilt. Mm -hmm. I will restore thy judges at the first <clears throat> and thy counselors at, as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called a city of righteousness, the faithful mm -hmm. city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, her converts with righteousness. Mm -hmm. So this is Satan seeking to set up a city. There's a decree right there, Ezra 725. Here's what it says, thou Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thine hands, set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy God, and teach them that know them not. And whosoever will not do the, <laughs> I cannot believe that my slide messed up like that. <laughs> um, it actually says, please go read Ezra 726. I don't know if you can pull it up on your phone, it here, but yeah. it's important that we read this text. I think oh man wow <laughs> we'll find wow it. so while she's looking for it or if one of you can post it in the chat that would be even better yeah so everybody else can see so i want you to check this out right what satan is going to do is plant or set up a kingdom with judges or with law and notice in ezra 7 26 it basically says let's see if we can pull it up yeah Go ahead. Can you read that? Wait, where are we? Okay, so. And, and whosoever, whosoever will not, not do, do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him. Let judgment be executed speedily upon him. Go ahead. Whether it be unto death or to banishment or to confiscation of goods or to imprisonment. All right. So you don't obey the laws, you're going to be locked up. You don't obey the laws, you're going to be put to death. That was when Jerusalem was, in essence, set. That, this is the decree coming from Artaxerxes, okay? Mm -hmm. It's coming from Artaxerxes. So listen. Satan's going to set up a kingdom. He's going to plant a kingdom that's going to have laws. And if you don't obey those laws, you're going to be put to death. He's mimicking Jerusalem. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. He's mimicking, he's setting up a counterfeit Jerusalem on the earth. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about tabernacles for a moment. Tabernacles. Tabernacles represent a place of worship. Right. So he's going to plant. We already see what the word plant indicates. His tabernacles, that's a place of worship. Okay. Okay. Exodus 15, verse 17, mm -hmm. thou shalt bring them and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. O Lord, which thy hands have established. Mm -hmm. So we see here that the tabernacles is pointing to the sanctuary, is pointing to a place of worship. Mm -hmm. So Satan is going to establish a place of worship. Psalms 132, verse 7. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Mm -hmm. Satan is going to is going to set up a system of worship mm -hmm. that is connected with his kingdom. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Exodus 25, verse 8. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may do what? Dwell mm -hmm. among them. Mm -hmm. This is the sign that God is with them. Right? Right? This is what's happening in Daniel 11, 45. Remember this, that it is ultimately Satan who exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he, as God, sits in the temple. temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he's basically, and I don't want to go before you, is just trying to do everything. I mean, that's the way God did it with Israel, right? He, They built a sanctuary. He dwelt among them. And this is what... And absolutely. he's just trying to re -rep or he's replicating, replicating that absolutely again. So what about his palaces? So he shall plant, we see what plant means, mm -hmm. the tabernacles, place of worship, mm -hmm. of his palaces. Well, what are palaces? Palaces are places where, where kings, kings worship. It's mm -hmm. a it's a place of of state, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So watch this. And you just reference verses, 2 Kings 20, verse 18. Um, the palace of the king of Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. The second 
Chronicles 36, 19, and they burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire. Mm -hmm. Palaces are places of state. Right. Right. So in essence, what you have, tabernacles mm -hmm. represents church, palaces represent state. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we have been told the image of the beast mm -hmm. is. Right. It is a setting up of a church state entity mm -hmm. that was like the one in the 1260, mm -hmm. that was like the one mm -hmm. in the dark ages, but it will far outdo the one in the dark ages because the one in the mm -hmm. dark ages <clears throat> only affected Europe. Mm -hmm. It only affected right. Europe, right? By and large, it, it was, was only little... Europe. This one is going to be worldwide worldwide, mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. all right remember this the tabernacle then would be symbolic of clay and the palaces of iron mm -hmm. that points us to daniel 2 right mm -hmm. isn't that what happens in daniel 2 the toes of iron and clay we're told in uh manuscript releases uh 15 page 39 the mingling of church craft and statecraft is represented by the iron and the clay. Mm -hmm. In Daniel 2, those feet of iron and clay is the mingling of churchcraft. You are the potter, we are the clay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? A people who profess to serve God and iron, part of the Roman Empire, right? Mm -hmm. Which was totally secular, right? This is the mingling of churchcraft and statecraft. This is, and I shouldn't say totally secular, I should say it was anti-Christian, mm -hmm. but it was a secular government, right? So, so you have the mingling of churchcraft and statecraft. Now, watch this. Here's what a lot of people don't understand. We erroneously look at the feet of iron and clay mm -hmm. as representing only Europe. Okay. This is incorrect mm. because you see, there are at least two phases in the iron and clay. Here's what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Churchcraft and statecraft did not only happen with the papacy within Europe. It, it is going to happen mm -hmm. in the United States mm -hmm. and around the world. So in essence, in that feet, in the feet of iron and clay, there's a deadly wound there. Mm -hmm. And then there's a healing of a deadly wound, that deadly wound. And then there is the worldwide mm -hmm. conglomeration of church and state. Okay. We usually limit it to Europe. Mm -hmm. And the, so that's why you always hear people talking about, look what's happening at the UN right. and the U and they're thinking that, that, that the toes of iron and clay represent the UN mm -hmm. today. It does not, y'all. Mm -hmm. The toes of iron and clay represented the UN during the 1260 years. And many of us are well, still. There was no UN, but well, <laughs> and, what, I know exactly. Right? I know but many of us are still living in the 1260. Right. We're still dealing with prophecy as if we're in the 1260 when the papacy mm -hmm. was ruling over Europe. It's not that anymore. Mm -hmm. The second phase of iron and clay is the threefold union of dragon, beast, and false prophet. How do we know that? Because it's this iron and clay that is present when Jesus comes mm -hmm. to smash the image. Mm -hmm. It's not the Ostrogoths and the Visigoths and the Heruli yeah. and the Vandals. No, mm -hmm. that was that was the 1260. The, the iron and clay in the end time is the threefold union of dragon, beast, false prophet, which includes america <laughs> mm -hmm. when's the last time you heard america was in daniel 2. when's the last time you heard the whole world was mm -hmm. involved in daniel 2. Mm -hmm. no it's just europe it's europe europe, europe mm -hmm. united nations europe mm -hmm. europe europe mm -hmm. so this is why this is crucial to understand listen to this in daniel 2 34 i'm about to just like get goosebumps here because this is just so mind-blowing y'all listen to this in Daniel 2, 34, the Bible says, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. So we know that it is stone cut out without hands that destroys the image. Why is that significant? Because in Daniel 2, 45, 
we now see, for as the stone, as thou sawest, the stone was cut out, cut out of the mountain without hands mm -hmm. and breaking pieces, whatever, right? Breaking pieces of the image. Watch this. We usually say that this stone cut out without hands, you know, represents the second coming of Christ, mm -hmm. which it does. Right. Because the image is destroyed. It right. does. But there is something else that is so crucial that we miss. And that is this. Where else in the Bible do we find stone being cut out without hands? Out of a mountain. Good. Where else do we find that, y'all? Okay. Jack's very good. The stone is not just destroying Europe. Mm -hmm. okay. That's powerful. The stone doesn't come to destroy Europe. It's destroying the whole world. And, and, and Sherry, absolutely. Watch this. In Exodus 24, verse 12, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me in the where? In the mount. And be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Watch this. Exodus 32, 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both sides. On the one side and on the other, they were written. Watch this. And the tables were, yes, natural mom, a Eurocentric prophecy has been a stumbling block. Right. Because we're basing everything on what what is the Pope going to do over right. in the United right. Nations? Right. And that is throwing us off our prophetic game. Mm -hmm. But let's come back to Exodus 32, verse 16. And the tables were the work of God. What does it mean? It means they were not hewed by hand mm -hmm. as the second tables of stone where Moses hewed them by hand. Mm -hmm. No, this was the work of God. This was stone cut out of the mountain mm -hmm. without hand. Right. What is God trying to bring our attention to in Daniel chapter 2? That the toes of iron and clay are trampling underfoot mm -hmm. the law of God. Mm -hmm. And that is why when people try to claim, oh, the law has been done away with and mm -hmm. oh, the stone, it, you know, it doesn't, uh, it, it Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Fabilo, uh, excellent question. That stone, it is, is it the second or the third coming? Because if it's the second coming, then it doesn't harmonize with the earth being desolate as it would still exist. Very good. Very good. I'm being kind of drawn everywhere right now, but let me address this real quick. Because the comments are coming. Daniel 2, the stone cut out without hands and the mountain filling the earth it cannot be the second coming only. Mm -hmm. This brings us down to the very end of the millennium because it is at the end of the millennium that the kingdom of God fills the earth. Mm -hmm. It is not at the second coming. At the second coming, and by the way, the, the image is destroyed together. Mm -hmm. That means everybody in the kingdom of Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome must be present when the image is destroyed. And when does that happen? It happens at the end of the 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because that's when the whole world, from beginning of time, all the wicked, from the beginning of time down to the very end of time, are together in one place at one time. So think of it like this. Mm -hmm. The toes of iron and clay are threefold. It's mm -hmm. a three. First, it was Europe during the 1260 mm -hmm. then it's going to be the whole living world mm -hmm. at the time of the second coming right. and finally it's going to be the whole wicked world from cain right. all the way down to the end of time in the kingdom of gog and magog mm -hmm. that's when they're all destroyed together mm -hmm. so daniel 2 is taking us down, not just to the second coming, but down to the very time at the mm -hmm. end of the millennium. And because we limit Daniel 2 to Europe, mm -hmm. we miss everything necessary to help us understand Daniel chapter 11. Mm. Wow. So watch this. The stone, what was written on the stone is what will condemn the wicked world. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. That's why it's a stone that destroys the image because they have been trampling underfoot the law of God. Now that very law that people are like, oh, it's done away with. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's no longer. Oh, we no longer need to keep it. Mm -hmm. Why does God use that term? Stone. Mm -hmm. He could have just said a stone, but no, he said a stone cut out, out without hand, hands, yeah. out of a mountain. Right. Come on. Yeah. And how have we missed this seven day Adventist? Mm -hmm. How did we miss that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered about this? By the way, let me, I'm going to read the statement first, and then we're going to go look at another statement very quickly. Through spiritualism, Satan appears as the benefactor of the race, healing the diseases of the people, and professes, professing to present a new and more exalted system of religion. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he works as a destroyer. This is what's happening here. Mm -hmm. He's setting up this kingdom. It's a new religious political kingdom mm -hmm. it is a counterfeiting of jerusalem and it has to do with trampling upon the law of god mm -hmm. now raise your hand if you've ever read this statement this is in the great controversy okay page 639 the glory of the celestial city streams from the gates ajar She's talking about Jesus mm -hmm. is about to come, right? Mm -hmm. And then she says this. Then there appears against the sky a hand holding two tables of stone folded together. Mm. Says the prophet, the heaven shall declare his righteousness for God is judge himself. Mm. That holy law, God's righteousness that amid thunder and flame was proclaimed from Sinai as the guide of life is now revealed to men as the rule of judgment. The hand opens the tables and there are seen the precepts of the Decalogue traced as with a pen of fire. The words are so plain that all can read them. Memory is aroused. The darkness of superstition and heresy is swept from every mind and God's 10 words, brief, comprehensive and authoritative are presented to the uh to the view of all the inhabitants of the earth mm -hmm. I've never read that. i used to wonder well where did i get that from mm -hmm. i believe it but just where did you get it from mm -hmm. <clears throat> come on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. daniel 2 tells us that a stone is coming hmm just put an eight in the chat if your heart is burning right now. Just put an eight in the chat if you just learned that there is a new way to present Daniel 2 and the law of God in Daniel 2 to those who think the law of God doesn't stand. Yeah. I kind of kick myself right now because I'm like, how many times in my evangelistic series have I preached Daniel 2 and I could have just nailed, nailed the law of God as still standing mm -hmm. and you know i was just focused on the prophetic element you know right. just mm -hmm. oh yeah and the stone it represents christ he's going to come again and just mm -hmm. man this is powerful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is just absolutely mind-blowing y'all mm -hmm. all right Atante, do you have any questions for me and do i need to cover anything that i do anything well, too fast from the chat it seems like everyone is connecting it so no okay Continuing on in that statement from okay. Great Controversy, she says the enemies of God's law, from the ministers down to the least among them, have a new conception of truth and duty. Too late they see that the Sabbath of the fourth commandment is the seal of the living God. Too late they see the true nature of their spurious Sabbath and the sandy foundation upon which they have been building. They find that they have been fighting against God. So here's what we catch, everyone. In Daniel 2, what we have is the stone being cut out without hands has something to do with the law of mm -hmm. God being trampled underfoot by this mingling of church craft and state craft. Mm -hmm. What do we find in Daniel 11? In the first prophetic chapter of Daniel, we have the very same thing as the last prophetic chapter of Daniel, but it is, it is nothing new. It is only mm -hmm. more detail. Mm -hmm. God is now showing us. Let me, let me take you back. Daniel 11, 40 to 45. Mm -hmm. Let me take you back. Since Daniel 2... Since Daniel 7 repeats and enlarged Daniel 2, mm -hmm. and Daniel 8 does the same, and Daniel 11 does the same, Daniel 11, 40 to 45 is giving us the detail mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. as to how this final iteration of, of iron and clay tramples underfoot the law of God mm-hmm. by law. Mm-hmm. And when that happens, Michael mm-hmm. stands up. All right. Mm-hmm. Where is he going to plant the tabernacles of his palaces? So we've already seen he will plant. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's setting up a kingdom with right. laws. Mm-hmm. The tabernacles has to do with worship. worship. Uh, palaces, palaces has to do kings. with state, kings. kings. Um, combine all this together. Go back to Daniel 2. Stone cut out without hands that destroys this image, that mm-hmm. destroys this, this kingdom. Okay, it's got to do with the law of God, right? Mm-hmm. The Ten Commandments. So now the question is, where is he going to plant the tabernacles? And the text says he plants it in Daniel eleven forty five. 45. He shall plant it in the seas or between, between the, seas, the seas in the glorious holy mountain. The revised, van, rev, the revised version, I'm sorry, reads, he shall plant the tents of his palace between the sea and the glorious holy mountain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The new King James version says the same thing. He shall plant the tents of his palaces between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. So he's going to interpose or set himself up between Mm -hmm. the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to actually redo my book on Daniel, the king of the north. I I got to redo my book. I told you that. Because when I wrote it before, (laughs) Mm -hmm. for those of you who have have that book, Mm -hmm. the coming king of the north, there was stuff that I, you know, still had not put together. Right. But yeah. 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 So listen. Maybe do a revision. Uh, yes. So watch this, right? What does it mean he's going to plant his tabernacles of his palaces between the seas mm-hmm. and the glorious holy mountain? In Ezekiel 28, verse 1, speaking about the type of Lucifer, the Lord, the word of the Lord came again to me saying, son of man, send to the prince of Tyrus, thus say the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Mm -hmm. Yet thou art a man and not God, that though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. So here we find God speaking about Lucifer Mm -hmm. through the type of Prince of Tyrus. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about him as trying to sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 17, 15, the Bible says, and he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Mm-hmm. So where the seas are basically speaking about Satan setting himself up between the people mm-hmm. and something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? The people and something. Now, let me divert here for just a little bit. Revelation 17, we're not going to be able to get into it today. I know that. But let me tell you, Revelation 17 is another highly misunderstood chapter Mm -hmm. when it comes to end time events. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in Revelation 17, we're following the same pattern that we followed in Daniel 2. We're thinking that these 10 kings represent United Nations. Mm -hmm. We're thinking that the woman, there is so much there. We're going to come to that. Trust me. We got more coming. We're going to be dealing with Revelation 17 as an entire, what is this beast that was and is not and yet is, and Mm -hmm. who are these seven kings, and what does it mean that, you know, one is and one Mm -hmm. is, what is all that talking about? Who are these 10 kings? Mm -hmm. We're going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to simplify it so that our 15-year-old can preach it. You know, I was just thinking before, you know, when just quoting that Revelation 17, like I think the reason why this back to the basics in a simple way is so important because when we hear us normal people <laughs> hear all of that, we're just like, uh, mm-hmm. we'll just skip over that or have a general basic yeah. understanding, but nothing, you know, that sticks. Yeah. And so I, yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. And, and you know what we, someone said it earlier, God's truth is, um, God's truth is progressive, mm-hmm. right? God's truth is progressive. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some things he doesn't even let us understand Mm -hmm. until it's time to understand. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, look, I've been studying Daniel two. Daniel two is a chapter that brought me into the church. Mm -hmm. I've been studying Daniel two for 23 years and I've never, Mm -hmm. never connected Mm -hmm. the stone cut out without hands from Mount Sinai with the stone in Daniel chapter two. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Never. It's just been, you know, you take every you hear everyone else say it. So yeah, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, right? Yeah. And some other people said, oh no, it's not Jesus, it's you know the 144, or is hmm. this that? But listen, y'all, like God is doing something here, he's revealing truth hmm. in a way that is preparing his people to be able to share it, to be able to understand it, and to mm -hmm. be able to be prepared for what is coming. Mm -hmm. All right. So we know the seas represent, and by the way, this, this is the point I was going to get to. In Revelation 17, 15, mm -hmm. it is the first time that John sees this whore sitting on mm -hmm. waters. He doesn't mm -hmm. see that anywhere else in the scriptures, anywhere else in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. So something is happening for the first time in Revelation 17, 15. And what I'm suggesting is that this whore sitting on the waters, mm -hmm. in other words, the waters are beneath her. So here's the waters. Mm -hmm. Here's the whore doing something. Mm -hmm. She's standing between the waters or mm -hmm. sitting mm -hmm. between the waters and something. Mm -hmm. I just want to say. I'm going to leave that there for a moment. Go ahead. Well, I'm just acknowledging um is it Riyadh his four months um uh, he's been baptized for four months and he's learning so much so praise I just God. praise God for that because he's new and he's able to understand this so yeah. again keeping yep. it simple enough and you're understanding deep things um in prophecy yep praise all right God. praise God praise God so let's look at this what is a glorious holy mountain or we should say where is a glorious holy mountain mm -hmm. so revelation 21 10 tells us and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god mm -hmm. so where is the holy mountain it's coming, coming down, down. Okay. from god mm -hmm. out of the holy mountain is in heaven mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if we put all this together mm -hmm. <clears throat> what we're seeing here is that Satan is going to set up a kingdom mm -hmm. that is designed to cut off mm -hmm. heaven from earth. Okay. He will sit in the place. He will, he will seek to hmm. intercept worship. And praise and prayer. And as if he is God. God. Yes. Okay. That. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's going to set up his kingdom to eclipse God's kingdom. But he's not. I mean, he can't. he can't. That's what I mean. He can't. So he can't. So notice, remember again, Matthew 24, 15. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet stand in the holy place. This is crucial. Y'all, this mm -hmm. is key. The text doesn't say when you shall see the abomination of the abomination of desolation, then flee. No, 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 no. It says, when you shall see the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place. Mm -hmm. So there's two separate things. The first thing is the appearing of the abomination of desolation. Right. And then there is the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. Hmm. Mark 13, 14 puts it this way. When you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. not. Wow. You know when someone says, you ought not to stand there. Yes. <laughs> I like, I like the way the KJV. I was just it. gonna say, I like the way Mark put it. Yeah, <laughs> standing where it ought not. Mm -hmm. Where ought it not to stand? Mm -hmm. It ought not to stand between God and the people. Right. And this is what he's doing. He's seeking to set up a kingdom that is going to that is going to counterfeit mm -hmm. and stand in between God and the people. Mm -hmm. You are standing in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Now remember this in Isaiah 14, verse 12. Speaking of Lucifer, it says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Mm -hmm. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Mm -hmm. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the where? North. north. I want to be the king of the north. Mm. I want to be the king of the north. Y'all, y'all. Mm -hmm. I want to be the king of the north. Mm -hmm. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Mm -hmm. I will be what? Mm -hmm. Like the most high. Mm -hmm. I will be mm -hmm. like the most mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. When you see Lucifer, what God is saying is, what Jesus was saying is this. 
when you see Lucifer on earth mm -hmm. doing what he tried to do in heaven, mm -hmm. the thing that got him kicked out of heaven, when you see him, I think we're gotten too bright. Yes, Let I do lower this too. Just a little bit. Lower this just a little bit. All right. For those of you, this is live. Is that better? The yeah. sunlight is behind yeah, us. Yeah, so, it, it wasn't earlier. It was yeah. very cloudy, actually. But the sun has come out, and I, I yeah, it definitely was drowning. As when out. you see Lucifer doing on earth what he sought to do in heaven, mm -hmm. then no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then no. Mm -hmm. This is interesting, though, because what, what Lucifer is basically trying to do is set up a counterfeit Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. In Exodus 19, 11, it says, and be ready against the third day for the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So what is all the people? If you, what would you call all the people? Put that in the chat for me. Mm -hmm. If you say a whole bunch of people have come together, what would you call that in religious terms, in church terms? A congregation. A congregation. Mm -hmm. Where is the first time you find a congregation gathered? At what mountain are they gathered? In the Bible, you're saying. In the, the Bible. Bible. <laughs> right. Right. So We're looking at the text right, right. now. Right. Okay. What Mount is that? It's at Sinai mm -hmm. where the law of God mm -hmm. was spoken. Mm -hmm. Do you catch this? Mm -hmm. Satan wants to create a mount of the congregation mm -hmm. scenario where he, like God mm -hmm. comes down mm -hmm. in the sight of the people mm -hmm. and speaks the law. This is the law you should obey. Right. Remember mm -hmm. to honor the mm -hmm. first day of the week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, this is just, I mean, I, as I'm just understanding even better how much Satan is just trying to, like you think of the great controversy and he was jealous of Jesus in, in heaven, why he couldn't be a part of um, the secret meeting with him and God and, and all these different things. And he just wanted to be equal with mm -hmm. Jesus always. He's always mm -hmm. fighting to do that. And the thing about this is, is that like we're studying this and Satan has seen this, you know, yeah, in scripture as well. Like he knows what his fate will be. And even with that, he's trying to deceive so many. And I just look at it like, again, because I'm a therapist, I just look at like mental health issue that Satan has. Like yeah. he, he is, was so jealous and so wanting to be like Jesus that, and he knows the truth, but it actually, like, I think it has him thinking so faulty, like, yep. like almost not, he knows the truth, but he has thought so incorrectly um, that he just doesn't yeah. believe that that's actually what's going to happen. Yeah. And that he, or, is, and that he just feels like he's like, yeah. just that feeling of him actually being worshiped by yep. the whole world will you know, just fulfill almost like he's a narcissist. Yep. He's Absolutely. the true narcissist. Absolutely. Because he Absolutely. knows the truth and what's going to happen, but he's doing all of this and people are going to perish and I, die and more be lost. People, yeah. The more people I can separate from God is the more, at this point, it's almost like the more pain I can inflict on God and he just him wants destroying to be, people. Like he just wants to be worshiped at this time, like this, yeah. the whole world thinking he's Jesus yep. and worshiping and praying to yep. him and, all of that, like Absolutely. It's, for him, it's worth doing all of this. Absolutely. Which is crazy. Absolutely. And evil. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it hurts the heart of God. Right. Every soul right. that is lost is an infinite hurt to the heart of God. Mm -hmm. So if he can do that a million times over, mm -hmm. let's do it. Mm -hmm. That's his, that's his mode of operation, right? <laughs> we said he wants to gaslight us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. that's right. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. look. Watch this. Psalm 68, 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, mm -hmm. even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai mm -hmm. in the holy place. We're, all we're doing is taking verse by verse and comparing and seeing, look, mm -hmm. this is what Satan's trying to do. So remember, he comes like with, with a whirlwind, with chariots mm -hmm. and horses. That's exactly how God came down right. on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And that was the mount of the congregation mm -hmm. in Exodus chapter 20. Mm -hmm. Right. Watch. Um, Albert Barnes on this very he's commentator on mm -hmm. this very text, mm -hmm. Psalm 68, 17. Here's what he says. Speaking about as in Sinai in the holy place. He says, literally, uh, the Lord is among Sinai in the sanctuary. The idea seems to be that even Sinai with all its splendor and glory, 
the Lord himself with all the attending hosts um, that came down on Sinai mm -hmm. seemed to be in the sanctuary, the holy place on the, on, Mount, on Mount Zion. All that were of pomp and grandeur and of, on Mount Sinai when God came down with the attending thousands of angels was really around Mount Zion for its protection and defense. Mm -hmm. In other words, what we see happening here is Satan in trying to do this mount, this uh, this setting up his tabernacles is trying to replicate what happened on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. We're all building up to something because right. he's going to try to try to enforce a law mm -hmm. that is not according to the law of God. Mm -hmm. When we get to Daniel 7, 25, we see, oh, he's going to try to change one of these commandments. Mm -hmm. And we know what commandment that is. Mm -hmm. And so Daniel 2 gives us the big picture. It mm -hmm. has to do with the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Daniel 7, one specifically mm -hmm. that he will think to change. So by the time we get to Daniel 11, okay, he's setting up a sanctuary mm -hmm. or he's setting up a, a, a system of worship that is going to be against the law of God that has to deal with a change law, which is mm -hmm. the Sabbath commandment. And he's going to try to enforce that upon pain of death. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen, right? Listen to this. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to I'm going to just hide my camera for a moment. I'm going to try to get rid of that light in the background. So give me one second here. All right. Okay. I think that's better. I think that is better. Get them lights back on. Okay. Okay. So please notice this. All right. Let's give you a little break to digest. Yes. Everything. <laughs> yes. All right. Exodus 26 35. Oh, someone says no sound. Oh. Can give us. No, we should have sound. Give us sound if you can hear us. All right. Can you hear us? Yeah, you can hear us. Give us a one in the chat if you could hear. All right. Okay, good. So, all right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, I need you to check this out, okay? Because in Exodus 26, verse 35, we see something very specific about the sanctuary. It says, and thou shalt set the table, that is a table of showbread, mm -hmm. without the veil and the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt put the table on the north side. So let me ask you a question. What was on the side of the north in the sanctuary? Help me out. What was on the side of the north in the sanctuary? It was, it was the table of showbread. Can you, you all got that? Mm -hmm. It was the table mm -hmm. of showbread. That is what was on the sides of the north. Now, what did the table of showbread symbolize? A table of showbread, 12 oh loaves of bread, represented the 12 tribes of Israel or right. the congregation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The table of showbread represented the congregation. It was on the sides of the north. See the chart right there? There is the holy place. So remember it says, doesn't say when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the most holy place, when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, hmm. where is he trying to stand? On the sides of the north. On the sides of the north. Mm -hmm. What's there? The table of showbread. What does the table of showbread represent? Mm -hmm. The 12 tribes of Israel, the congregation. Mm -hmm. In other words, Satan, when you see Satan setting himself up, over the mount of the congregation as if he were God. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. only that, mm -hmm. the table of showbread 
with the bread on it represents the word of God. Mm -hmm. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth mm -hmm. of God. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation trying to usurp the word of God, mm -hmm. set himself up over the word of God. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Psalm 48, verse 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the what? North, North. the city of the, the great, great king. king. Mm -hmm. What is Satan going to try to do? He's, tr he's going to try to set up a counterfeit Mount Zion kingdom, which is the whole world. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, y'all. This is the point in which the woman in Revelation 17 is sitting on the seas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is post deadly wound. The woman is sitting over the seas between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Mm -hmm. This is when Babylon I can't even give it away that y'all are just going to have to wait till we get to Revelation 17 because I'll mess myself up and tell you. Let me be quiet. All right. So when Satan, Satan tries to make his word over God's word and Satan rules over the congregation, right. this is the setting up. He does this through imposing a law that is a counterfeit of God's law. Mm -hmm. which we know from Daniel 7, 25 to be the Sabbath commandment. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but the table of showbread, listen carefully. In Leviticus 24, verse 8, it says, Every Sabbath shall he set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant, which means that while the altar of incense was to be tended to daily mm -hmm. and the candlestick was to be tended to daily. Mm -hmm. The table of showbread was to draw our attention to the Sabbath mm -hmm. because it was changed every Sabbath. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did y'all catch that? Yeah, that makes sense. So, so when you that. see mm -hmm. Satan claiming to have authority mm -hmm. over changing the Sabbath mm -hmm. against the law of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Yeah. That's when you shall see the abomination of desolation standing over the mount of congregation, exercising his authority over the Sabbath. Wow. Yeah. See, guys, here's the that thing. We, you know, you can't go to, you know, somebody in the world and say, uh, Ellen White says the mark of the beast is. Yeah, you blah, surely blah, blah. cannot. You can't do that. You can't. And most and of us. And we shouldn't. Yeah. Do that anyways. Yeah. We should say the word of God. We need yeah. to be standing on the word of God and then the, the spirit of prophecy supplements. Absolutely. That. So most of us use Ellen White as a cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. And in trying to cheat, we come up with the wrong answers. Right. <laughs> That's what's happening. Right. Oh, and, and, and so because we're not doing the work of wow. digging into the truth and finding it for ourselves in the wow. Bible, we end up cheating ourselves mm -hmm. and other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because now we're like, you know, our prophecy is off mm -hmm. because yeah. we haven't taken the time to say, let me demonstrate this to you from the word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. So watch this. We're, we've just set the foundation because we still haven't addressed how he does this. Mm -hmm. So let's let's see what happens here in the Great Controversy, page 5, 5, 559. Here's what, we're, here's what we read. Satan can quote scripture now as in the days of Christ. He will pervert its teachings to sustain his delusions. Those who would stand in this time of peril must uh, understand for themselves the testimony of scripture. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. She didn't say must understand my writings. Mm -hmm. She said must understand and the, the testimony, testimony of, the of the scriptures. Because Satan is going to quote scripture in this time right. 
to defend this new kingdom. If I can put it this way, right now, Babylon is, it's symbolic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's in its embryonic form, if you will. Mm. Hmm. Babylon will actually become a new world order. Like when people talk about the new world order and they say, we're in a new world order right now. No, this is not the new world order. Mm -hmm. The new world order occurs mm -hmm. when Satan sets it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a new world order. Mm -hmm. That is when our constitution, every principle of our constitution will be repudiated. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we're now under a theocracy. Why are we under theocracy? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is here ruling with us. Mm -hmm. Look, Jesus is here. Mm -hmm. So the constitution, yeah, but now it's time for Jesus to rule. Mm -hmm. And and for all you atheists and Muslims and whatever you, you know, whatever you were thinking, whatever you're like, oh, this is not, uh, 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 this is, uh, let me retrace my thought. <laughs> It is Satan setting up this theocracy that leads to Babylon being described as fallen mm -hmm. in Revelation 18. So note Revelation 17, you got the woman sitting on waters. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation 18, you now have this final message. Mm -hmm. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Mm -hmm. Do y'all catch this? This is all Bible. Mm -hmm. This is all Bible. So why do I begin with this idea of Satan will quote scriptures? Well, listen carefully. Listen to this. In Isaiah 66, verse 15, watch this. The same verse we use, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Notice verse 18. For I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come to, it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. What do you think Satan's going to try to do? The same thing. Watch verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, mm -hmm. said the Lord. Mm -hmm. as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. Now, guess what comes next? Same chapter, mm -hmm. Isaiah 66. Notice, where are you? Notice mm -hmm. verse 21. And I will also take of them for priests and for mm -hmm. Levites, say the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one what? Sabbath. To another shall all flesh come <coughs> before me to worship. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Isaiah 66, 15 mm -hmm. describes Christ coming like a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Seven verses later, mm -hmm. <clears throat> eight verses later, you have this text of from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come before me in worship. Mm -hmm. What do you think Satan is going to do? What do you think Satan is? He's going to use these mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. verses. Mm -hmm. Look, I am here. Yeah. And from one Sunday yeah. to another. All flesh we'll come should come before we'll me to worship. to worship. Now, if you're not coming before the Lord mm -hmm. to worship, mm -hmm. what do you think that indicates? You are blaspheming. Mm -hmm. Jesus. You are troubling mm -hmm. the world. You are, you are the wicked. Mm -hmm. Because remember, mm -hmm. the Sabbath, according to Exodus 31, is a sign mm -hmm. between God and his people. Mm -hmm. So what do you think Satan is going to do regarding the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. He's going to basically say, listen, 
first day of the week, mm -hmm. it is a sign between me and my people mm -hmm. that you may know that I'm the Lord that sanctifies you. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. Just as in the Old Testament, it was a sign. Mm -hmm. So here in this new kingdom, the Sabbath, mm -hmm. the Lord's day is the sign that you are truly walking with God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, Satan is going to try everything that, that, Jesus represents and does Satan's going to try to recreate as this is absolutely for him. What would be the safeguard for, I mean, like we're studying this now and we're seeing this, but in that time, and I've talked about it a couple of programs ago with, this is not just like, Oh, your friends think you're doing something wrong or you know your family doesn't agree with you this is the entire world mm -hmm. the majority of doesn't agree with you yeah so you're understanding these truths and at that time you're feeling all that pressure and, and you have a physical being on the earth that's saying i'm jesus and this is the truth what safeguard does it, <clears throat> does a christian who believes the truth have Satan can quote scriptures now as in the days of Christ, and he will pervert his teachings to sustain his delusions. Those who would stand in this time of peril must understand for themselves the testimony of the scriptures. Yeah, and I think what is so important in this is understand for themselves. For and, themselves. And that's been, and I'll just say, okay, I'm guilty of that too. So I'm not, I'm not saying if, if because. If you, Understanding for yourself because you get so dependent upon your pastor, yep. upon, yeah, just the pastor yep. and other people teaching um, instead of doing it for yourself. Um, and so I think this is where, and of course, having a relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, um, you know, if you have that connection with the Holy Spirit and hearing his voice and following him and, and doing what he says, then you're, you're in training to to be able to do that during this time yep. as well. But I think the most important thing about that quote is knowing these truths for yourself. So you there will be no confusion. Because I think the way Satan will try to work, because he knows if like Christians haven't studied the word the way they should, right? it's easy to confuse them. Yeah. Yep. It's easy. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay, I was wrong. Okay, I didn't get that part. No, okay, I was wrong and whatever. It's, yeah. So that's why it's so very important. Yeah, it's it's um, in order for us to rightly divide the word of truth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I'm telling you, even within our church, like <clears throat> you have people that are like dogmatic, incorrect in their view of, of prophecy. Right. Right. And they're dogmatic about it. Right. Right. Because it's holding the line and it's present truth and it's. We've got to believe this way because mm -hmm. <clears throat> not realizing that, that what they're holding on to is tradition. Right. Traditions of, you know, of prophecy mm -hmm. that are actually not founded mm -hmm. in the Bible mm -hmm. or in the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. We are in the place of making the same mistakes mm -hmm. that the Jews made mm -hmm. when it came to Christ's first coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Here's an example on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Zechariah 14, 6 and 16 and 17. It shall come to pass mm -hmm. that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that those who will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Zechariah 14, we talked mm -hmm. about this before. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 14 mm -hmm. will be used and in fact, is now used to teach that there will be a millennial kingdom in which Christ is going to be ruling and those who don't worship him are going to have punishments. Mm -hmm. How do you answer Zechariah 14? Mm -hmm. How do you answer verses like Isaiah 2, 2 and 3? And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and, he, and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow unto it. This is what Satan's going to do. Mm -hmm. And many shall go and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law mm -hmm. 
the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. How are we going to respond when Satan comes claiming to have fulfilled mm -hmm. these texts, mm -hmm. right? How are we going to understand and, and when they're quoting these verses and when spirits of dead are quoting these verses? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. So many of us are, are caught up in, in incorrectly studying the spirit of prophecy mm -hmm. and not going to the Bible mm -hmm. to see why we believe what we believe, just trying to use the cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. not going to know how to answer these questions. Right, right. No. We have to understand, you know, I did a sermon some time ago um, on uh, Mount Ebal mm -hmm. and Mount Gerizim, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And how the promises of God were conditional. And there were some prophecies that were given that were supposed to be fulfilled at the first coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. But because of Israel's rejection of the Messiah, they were never fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And so when people fail to understand where prophecies fall in place, what prophecies were conditional, what prophecies were unconditional. Mm -hmm. and, and conditional doesn't mean, oh, it wasn't fulfilled, so, oh, it happened to be conditional then. Right. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. God actually said to them, listen, if you do this, this is what, this is the future glory you can expect for Israel. Mm -hmm. If you don't do this, that's right, Nicole, the three heavens principle. For those of you who are unaware of the three heavens principle, you need to find out what that is. Like go back to, I don't know if Charles is watching. Charles, I don't know what, how we can, I don't remember that but either. that was the last. <clears throat> In other words, let this, me say it was this year. It was this year. <laughs> Remember this, right? When Peter is speaking on the day of Pentecost and he's warning the people about the coming day of the Lord mm -hmm. and he's quoting from Joel 2, he's not talking about the end of time. Mm -hmm. Even though the term day of the Lord is used, that day of the Lord was in reference to the destruction of Jerusalem by mm -hmm. the Roman armies. That's why he quotes Joel 2 mm -hmm. about this army that's coming. He was warning them, if you don't accept Christ, the day of the Lord is coming. Mm -hmm. So there are several day of the Lord prophecies in the Bible. Mm -hmm. One of them is dealing with the destruction of Jerusalem by Babylon. Right. The second one is dealing with the destruction of Jerusalem by Rome. Mm -hmm. And the last one is dealing with the destruction of the world when Jesus comes again. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand which prophecies are relating to the first day of the Lord mm -hmm. versus the second day of the Lord versus the third day of the Lord. And what happens is that people just mix them up. They mm -hmm. think everything is dealing with the last day of the Lord. No, right. no, 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 no. So this is what, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time to go into that. We need to, we're going to wrap this up because I think we do have just a few more slides and a to few go more minutes. and a yeah. few more minutes. Okay. So <clears throat> remember what happens at the millennium. The Bible says, I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. Just stop for a second. If Satan's coming as Christ mm -hmm. and claiming that this is the millennium, then what's he going to do? He's going to set up thrones, mm -hmm. which means, hey, you all are going to be my kings. Mm -hmm. Remember those 10 kings that have received no kingdom as of yet in Revelation 17, y'all? Mm -hmm. It will be Satan that provides for them that kingdom. And what is that kingdom? It's the millennial kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's the supposed millennial kingdom, mm -hmm. right? Judgment is going to be given to the saints. Well, who are the saints? It's the wicked. Okay. Mm. And who are they going to be judging? The, the wicked. wicked. Mm -hmm. Who are really the who? The righteous. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who refuse to go along with this right. counterfeit uh, um kingdom mm. this counterfeit millennium right mm -hmm. so <clears throat> listen to this as the crowning act in the great drama of deception satan himself will attempt to personate christ in different parts of the earth satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness resembling the description of the son of god given by john in the revelation going on satan will continue to act the double part <clears throat> appearing to be the dispenser of great blessings and divine truths he will, by his lying wonders, hold the world under his uh, under his control. She goes on to say that he will blame the people, the people of God, for the desolations coming upon the earth, right. and will 
say, you know what, they need to be put out because mm -hmm. they are not in line with the millennium. Mm -hmm. They are not in line with my kingdom. And in this space at that time, it was <clears throat> correct and right to be able to judge them and sentence them to death. Absolutely. Or, okay. But not immediately. Right. Because it says here, uh, volume four, uh, Spirit of Prophecy, page 444, after she describes the appearing of Satan, after she mm -hmm. says, in the last conflict, the Sabbath will be the special point of controversy throughout all Christendom. Secular rulers and religious leaders will unite to enforce the observance of Sunday. And as milder measures fail, the most oppressive laws will be enacted. Mm -hmm. It will be urged that the few who stand in opposition to an institution of church and law of the land ought not be tolerated. <clears throat> and a decree will finally be issued denouncing them as deser deserving of the severest punishments. Mm -hmm. In other words, Satan comes. Mm -hmm. This is the new kingdom, y'all. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, I'm Jesus. I'm nice. I'm merciful. Mm -hmm. Hey, I understand right now that you're, that you um, Adventists are not right there right now, but mm -hmm. you know, we're just going to make these, these punishments mild. But as faithful commandment keepers, I'm not mm -hmm. saying Adventists now, people who are coming out of Babylon and saying, mm -hmm. no, no, this is not it. There's going to be it's going to be more oppressive and oppressive and oppressive until it's death. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So these stages under the image of the beast, which is formed by Satan himself, mm -hmm. it's occurring after the appearing of Satan. And then she closes with this. The people of God will then flee from cities and villages and associate together in companies dwelling in the most desolate and solitary places. When you see, the abomination of desolation, mm -hmm. standing in the holy place, then you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it is time to bounce. Mm -hmm. I mean, leave. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Because before mm -hmm. then, we will see the abomination of desolation, mm -hmm. but we know that we still need to be preaching. Right. We're going to be preaching in the face of Satan. Yes. And that takes a lot of Holy Spirit. And that spirit. takes a lot of Holy Spirit, spirit and a lot of boldness yes. and a lot of courage. Yes. But when that death decree is issued, then we know, all right, mm -hmm. now it's done. There's nothing left for us to do. It's time to flee. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so very simple, y'all. Here are those four points. The whirlwind is the counterfeit coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. The chariots and horsemen represent demons pretend, pretending to be angels. Mm -hmm. The ships represent demons pretending to be the dead. Mm -hmm. The tabernacles is Sunday sacredness and a theocracy okay. that is set up mm -hmm. on pain of death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here is the translation of Daniel 1140 to Daniel 12. And then we're done for today. Next week, we're going to pick up on Revelation chapter 13 and Revelation chapter 17 and tie it in with Daniel 40 to 45. <clears throat> so here is my translation of verses 40 to 45. In 1798, atheism will inflict a deadly wound on the papacy, separating church and state. And when Satan appears as Christ with demonic spirits, uniting the beast from the earth and the beast from the sea, apostate Protestantism and Catholicism, they will defeat atheism and secularism and conquer the whole world through this overmastering deception. Satan will then turn his attention on God's people and many countries will follow the lead of Satan's new empire. But God has people in Babylon, not of this fold, who will escape this delusion. Verse 42, Satan will deceive the whole world. Not even atheists will be left. Verse 43, he shall exercise power over the ability of the people to buy or sell. And everyone in league with unbelievers will worship. Verse 44, but the three angels' messages will at the same time go forth with great power lightening the whole earth with glory and troubling Satan so much that he will issue a death decree. Verse 45. I'm sorry. That is verse 44 and 45. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Daniel 12, 1, at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is as it reads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And that's a wrap. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm glad we had the extra time to spend time in that because that probably would have been too.
programs yeah. um, without the extra time. Next week we do, or next week, um, next week we won't be having. But you know what? The, the today was enough for two weeks. For two weeks, go back and study. <clears throat> for those who have missed one of the episodes, episodes, go back and watch the one you missed. Or if you've missed all of them, go back um, because we won't be back till the twentieth. I think that's the twentieth. Yeah. But next week we won't be having class or Sabbath school. Sabbath school class. Yeah. Um, if you want my slides, and they all many people do. Yeah. They want the slides of the whole series. Yeah. So just know that on my YouTube page, there's a playlist. <clears throat> if you missed the ones before this, this is number six. This is number six. Number right? six, right? So listen, y'all, six like hour and a half presentations on Daniel 11, 40 to 45. Mm -hmm. And they're not complicated. No. Okay. 15 year old so, can learn it and not and just learn it. it and preach it and teach it to others. Yeah. So it's not, it's not hard. So like really no one has any excuse. Like, yeah. Nobody. Not even so me. if you want the slides, we're going to be posting the slides mm -hmm. here for this particular um, presentation today. They will be posted hopefully later today on the YouTube link. Mm -hmm. um, when this video goes live on or goes up on YouTube, the link will be in the description. Same for Facebook. Um, I think Instagram is, is actually with us. I hope mm -hmm. we tried to go live with them. So I'm not sure how that, how that, how that went. But anyway, guys, um, we will pick up with Revelation chapter 17 the following week. Mm -hmm. um, and that is going to be just as eye opening mm -hmm. and as revealing as these previous studies have been. Okay. It, it, <laughs> We're going to go to Revelation 18 as well <clears throat> and 19. Mm -hmm. That's all future. So there's something that was in the chat quite a bit it was talking about fleeing to the country and that type i, I want to cover that like in two weeks not cover it completely yeah. but i want to talk about that yeah. a little bit yep so um or leaving the cities and yeah. all of that and timing and we will do it yeah all right <clears throat> so so yes um again if you live in the bay area we are having church obviously we will not be there um in person because we're not in the Bay Area right now, um, but there is church and we have a guest speaker um, who is a um, licensed marriage and family therapist. And he's also a pastor, uh, Claudio Silva, and it will be uh, a blessing. So if you live in the Bay Area, please come to Campbell, Seventh-day Adventist Church, 600 West Campbell Avenue, for those of you who um, didn't have the address. But yeah, please join. And um, we look forward to coming back here and studying more in two weeks. But in the meantime, while we're not having uh, Sabbath school next week, uh, please go back and, and study. Because we saw in that quote that if you don't know these things personally for ourselves, we can get confused and deceived by the events and things that will happen at that time. And we don't want that for, I don't want that for myself. And we don't want that for um, any of you either. So share these presentations, but study them for <clears throat> yourselves as well. And we look forward to um, having um, class again in yeah. two weeks. And um, I'm, I'm sorry to do this, but yes, tutorial one, two, three. Comment just made about the kingdom of God, God's government being spread in the whole earth. <clears throat> it's a powerful thought because the 10 commandments, which is summarized with love, mm. that is the basis of the kingdom of God, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a powerful thought when we understand that what is going to fill the earth, the government of God is based upon his law and mm -hmm. that law is a law of love. Mm. Yes. Keep that in mind and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Right. We're going to okay. close in prayer. Tyler, you want to pray for us, please? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this study. Thank you um, for all of those who have joined and um, have gotten deeper understanding, Lord. We thank you for giving us a clear roadmap onto how things will, um, how they will happen, Lord. And we just pray that we will all go deeper into studying these things for ourselves so that we will not be deceived. But most importantly, too, that we are actually preaching the gospel right now and sharing with the world uh, the truth of your love um, for the world and for individuals. Uh, Lord, help us to make that the most important thing that we do um, in this world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All right. God, God bless you guys. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat>